Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nikos, and let's talk about Minecraft. Did you <laughs> Minecraft alongside its soundtrack feels kind of like a half-remembered dream. It's ethereal and psychedelic and even eerie at times, especially as night falls, and the often jumpy enemies come out, such as the creepers and skeletons who'd rather just jump scare you half the time. For new players in this unexplored game, Minecraft was a very enticing adventure. And there's something about classic Minecraft that just feels different than anything we'd ever played at the time. The game definitely looks very different than any games we played around that time. Not to mention, it's a huge tone shift from the bombastic shoot 'em ups that most red blooded American patriots like me were playing at the time. While the market was saturated with all these colorful and vibrant adventure games, how did this game succeed? Like, genuinely, you look at the charts, Minecraft is the highest selling game of all time from a tiny, basically dollarless studio. Like, how? Minecraft felt like it dropped from another planet when it first surfaced back in 2009. And as the game began picking up steam in underground circles, mysterious urban internet legends were shared in rumors across the web. Alongside these creepy ghost stories, I've seen fans discuss and fascination with how creepy this game used to be, especially in its early days. And even more so when you play alone. At times, the eerie silence in game has players feeling like they're being watched. What makes classic Minecraft so nostalgic and eerie at the same time? Oh, oh. Put simply, Minecraft offered a new take on a relatively unexplored game genre. An abstract sandbox where you could fight for your own survival and create anything. One with a calming, warm soundtrack, lo-fi sound effects, and visuals that clashed the brave new world of 3D with retro pixel textures. A strange bridge between adventure games of old and the technology of today. And boy, does it take the best of modern technology to even run this game outside of Microsoft PowerPoint frame rates. When I first played this game back in 2011, my mom's Hewlett Packard abomination could barely make this thing work. You could cook scrambled eggs on the keyboard, it got so hot. This right here is the first world I remember when I first played Minecraft back in October of 2011. The world seed is Mountain Island Big. I put that for the world seed because I was convinced it would give me some sort of psychedelic world generation. Take notes, I know the strats. While I launched some other worlds first, Mountain Island Big was the first one I committed a lot of time to. Running it back in this old version gave me mad nostalgia. And by doing so, I figured out what was missing from modern Minecraft that brought classic Minecraft to another level. The simplicity, art style, and lack of objectives. In very ancient builds of this game, Minecraft was a simple block placing and removal simulator. Soon, it would see a survival mechanic be implemented in a version called InDev. At the time though, the bones were just there, and the game was just a shadow of what it would become. This changed forever when InfDev was released, as caves, valleys, and forests now stretched endlessly. Worlds were randomly generated, meaning no two worlds were alike on generation. Several months back, I played through Minecraft InfDev for 100 days, or 40 real life hours. Go check out the video on my channel if you want to watch me struggle through it. My key takeaway from InfDev is that it's boring. Insanely boring. And also incredibly terrifying. Do diamonds just not exist anymore or something? Like, what's going on here? Gosh! The game is creepy with the lower render distance at night. Everything pops into view like it's a PlayStation 1 game, and the maddeningly repetitive lime green forests span endlessly. Thanks, past me. Couldn't have said it better myself. The game lacked a lot of the features as well as polish that we'd see in later versions. Ambient monster sounds were completely missing. Cave diving became an absolute horror game. The one thing you'd hear from an enemy before they attacked was their footsteps. It's genuinely freaky. And if you were lucky, you'd run into a skeleton. This sucks, dude. I hate this game. It's scary. And you'd lose your hearing. Enjoy the military grade tinnitus. No joke, pre alpha Minecraft is actually pretty terrifying. There was only one biome in InfDev, and the infinite world was completely sublime. 
You really felt tiny in this world of infinite repetition. You could get lost incredibly easily, and though you could kind of get lost in future Minecraft updates, back then everything looked the same. And going past InfDev, the game continued to be kind of eerie and creepy at times, even into alpha, beta, and post-release versions. Partially contributing to how creepy this game felt at times is how eclectic the art in the game looks. Like I mentioned earlier, the bizarre clash of 3D objects with pixel textures wasn't something we'd seen before. The game's graphics look pretty foreign to what we're used to. Between that and the attempts Minecraft made to mirror our reality, what with the goofy ah looking trees and semi-realistic survival mechanics, classic Minecraft became kind of uncanny, a bizarre conjunction between reality and otherworldly. Minecraft was genuinely an alien game, owed in part to an innovative, fresh art style from the indie dev studio out of Sweden. And before someone comments liminal spaces, yes, the game sometimes feels like that, especially on older builds. As the updates rolled on and more biomes and dimensions were added, the game maintained this quirky, half-grounded art style. If you wanted a genuinely frozen feeling though, hit the render distance down to tiny. This made the game run straight out of an N64 cartridge. And this effect was crucial to the original Herobrine image that blew up while Minecraft was still in its infancy. That eerie fog carried this ghost story and creepypasta into legend. The legend of Notch's dead brother who continued to haunt the game. A story where Notch was emailed during the early development of the game, to which he replied, I had a brother, but he is no longer with us. Though Notch has confirmed he actually never had a brother, the ghost story absolutely blew up and became enshrined as an internet legend. I remember being on the lookout for this elusive entity myself, scanning the horizons in anticipation. Hundreds of sighting videos were put out. And Mojang too had some fun with this legend by including removed Herobrine and all the early update changelogs back then just to tease fans a bit. Another memorable cryptic mystery comes in the form of the music discs 13 and 11. In Minecraft, you can acquire music discs and play them in game, and they usually have pretty upbeat chipper tones created by C418. Two of these discs play unsettling cave-like ambience, which prompted a lot of speculation from fans, especially because in Disc 11, you could hear what sounded like a human of some kind, which serves as perhaps the only evidence of another type of human in the world of Minecraft recorded anywhere within the game. The leading theory states that if you slot Disc 11 into the middle of Disc 13 right when a quiet section plays out, you can build a full story of a player escaping a skeleton and narrowly dodging a creeper blast as he makes his way out of a cave. Another piece of mysterious and quite awesome Minecraft folklore is the Sky Dimension. This is a cut dimension that was meant to be the complete opposite of the Nether, and it's pretty similar to a really popular mod from around the time called the Aether mod. This was confirmed to be in development by Notch until it was eventually scrapped and replaced with the end when the full game released in 2011. Still, sometimes I like to think what could have been if the Sky Dimension did ultimately enter the game. Back to Mountain Island Big again, I recall being genuinely unnerved while playing Minecraft when I was young. It was exhilarating, and part of the reason I became absolutely addicted to this game like an alleyway tweaker. That jolt of adrenaline when running out in the night or entering caves was kinda awesome. Like the jump scares, I mean they're family friendly but they're effective. And I loved it, genuinely, it was sick. And building up and mustering the courage to go into that cave and come out with a ton of iron and diamonds, man, nah, there was no greater reward. Whenever a cave sound stinger would play while mining, ah, oh, that had miners catching a thousand yard stare with themselves in their reflection on the monitor. Okay, I didn't need that. This scarier side to the game mostly worked since we were all new to the game and barely understood anything. I mean, heck, I didn't even Google the crafting recipes or know what was in the game. I just kind of guessed and checked. It also didn't help that misinformation was spreading like campfire ghost stories. It, it was genuinely an awesome time. It made this game feel more like an adventure as we uncovered slime chunks, looked for diamonds near lava, and tried to summon Herobrine. Although, those last two ones were myths. 
We all fell for them, let's be real. Speaking of adventure, some dared to venture where no others had gone before. They walked for countless hours in the very early builds of the game until they reached the edge of the world. Though I mentioned that the world is infinite earlier, it more so is virtually infinite, spanning larger than the surface area of our actual Earth. At the boundaries of the world were the Far Lands, a glitched world generation of towering chunks of impossible geometry. This legend began circulating around the same time as Herobrine, doubling down on the mysticism of this unexplored game. When all of us began joining servers, and for some, when the console ports first dropped, we finally got to share the game with our friends. Which is about when Minecraft skyrocketed. This went beyond the tutorial worlds of the console editions. As we were bringing friends together to play the game, which is about the time nostalgic moments began to overload, millions of hours were spent in Skyblock, minigames, survival, modded worlds and servers, adventure maps, and more. By 2012, this legendary and mysterious game completely overtook the entire gaming industry. This was the peak popularity of the game, and it was within Minecraft's minimalistic aesthetic and minimalistic design. It was back when the game was installed on a sketchy launcher. Modding was done through crack it open file explorer and deleting meta inf. The game had far fewer complexities and was far more concise with less items and elements. It was a perfect balance for the game that pretty much everyone could get behind, pick up and play with no trouble. This is the recipe for overwhelming international nostalgia. Droopy wants a friend. Droopy begins to look for a friend. Droopy looks in a cave. No one is there. Droopy looks under a tree. Droopy is enormous. Minecraft. Beautiful, isn't it? All this considered, the art style of Minecraft even today is a huge portion of what builds up its overall vibe. But there's perhaps something even more significant to this game's aura that I haven't really touched on yet. As you may know by now, I like music. Like, a lot. And the most emotionally gripping and even heart-wrenching piece of classic Minecraft to me is the music. The ambient tracks that occasionally play while in game are straight up beautiful. I have barely any complaints about the soundtrack, there's practically not a single skip on the entire Minecraft Volume Alpha album. Well, aside from 13 as I'm not trying to listen to an orchestra fall down the stairs right now. The album features instantly recognizable hood classics like Subwoofer Lullaby and Minecraft. and Sweden, not to mention the underrated Living Mice and Moog City. These titles are crazy. Anyway, C418 could not have created a more perfect soundtrack to fit this game. And I find a lot of the tracks on this album that aren't featured in game to be just as amazing. Being as Minecraft is an abstract, themeless sandbox world, the piano is the perfect choice as the star for Minecraft Alpha's soundtrack. Other strings, bizarre synths, and effects litter the soundtrack to give it an eclectic yet abstract feel. And let's just be real, it's beautiful. It is an eargasm. This has perhaps made Minecraft the most instantly recognizable soundtrack on the planet, despite how elementary the instruments on display are. Pleasant tones marked by upbeat adventure, curious moments of thoughtful muses, Genuinely beautiful sounds and more have come to define the internet in the 2010s. I want to circle back to how I mentioned this game's classic soundtrack is emotionally impactful. This is because the music of Minecraft has been the soundtrack for a good half of my life, and likely millions of others as well. The nostalgic upbeat tones take on a bittersweet quality as they've aged. Time has quite literally disappeared. A decade of rolling into survival worlds, modded servers, and minigames with friends and family. 
I've played the game with every friend I've ever known, many of which I haven't spoken with in years. It makes the soundtrack feel a lot more mournful rather than joyful nowadays. But I also have loads of great memories that I recall when I listen to it as well. Like the times I hopped on Xbox Edition with friends right after school, or the time my dad and I unearthed an entire Xbox world to build a city on the surface. Or even that time my dad and I absolutely no-lifed a land server in a Pensacola hotel. Perhaps the biggest reason I started this channel is because I've always wanted to make videos. When I was a kid, I wanted to make Minecraft videos. And when I first figured out how to mod the game, I recall long road trips in the night with my mom, as I was playing Clay Soldiers in the passenger seat on my laptop. The prank wars, base wars, and more. And I'm not alone. A lot of discourse online has concurred that this soundtrack is somewhat saddening to fans. This is why Minecraft feels like a half-remembered fever dream. The soundtrack alongside older builds of the game are basically a time machine. Minecraft is an eerily nostalgic game because of how this soundtrack makes me, and all of you, miss so much. Classic Minecraft is genuinely entrancing. It exhibited the wildest and freshest aura we've seen at the time. It's creepy, awe-inspiring, and weirdly cozy at the same time, as it collides retro pixels with 3D worlds and classical music styles with ambient electronic synths. This weird sandbox game should have never taken off in the saturated western gaming industry full of AAA titans, but it did, likely due entirely to its quirky aesthetic. The ever-evolving mystery of Minecraft propelled this little cave game into the build height limit. Thank you guys for watching. I, I felt like I had to make this video for a while. It brought up a lot of memories. Thank you to the patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. I look forward to making more vids for y'all.